Welcome to my channel. We've all wondered at how magically data is transmitted in the seemingly virtual world of computer networks at lightning speeds at some point, haven't we? Well, let's discover how this brilliant process takes place. So, what is a computer network? A computer network is a set of interconnected computers and other devices such as mobile phones and tablets that can communicate and share resources. These networks can be as small as a local network within a single building or as vast as the internet connecting computers globally. Networks enable communication by using various technologies such as wired like the ethernet cables or wireless like the Wi-Fi connections. They allow devices to share data, files, and resources, as well as access services and information from other connected devices. Networking plays a crucial role in modern computing, facilitating collaboration, resource sharing, and internet access. There are different types of computer networks. Number one, the local area network or LAN, a LAN is a network limited to a small geographic area, like a single building or a campus. Computers in a LAN can easily share resources and data transfer speeds are high. Number two, the wide area network or the WAN. These cover a broader geographical area, connecting LANs across cities, countries, or even continents. The internet is a prime example of a global WAN. Number three, the metropolitan area network or the MAN. MANs cover larger geographical areas than LANs, but are smaller than WANs. They typically span a city and are used to connect multiple LANs. The wireless LAN or the WLAN. Similar to a LAN, but using wireless technologies like Wi-Fi for connectivity, allowing devices to connect without physical cables. Number five, the personal area network or the PAN. A PAN is a small network for personal devices, typically within the range of an individual person, like connecting a smartphone to a laptop via Bluetooth. Number six, the client server network. In this model, computers or clients request services or resources from a central server, common in business environments for tasks like file storage and email. Number seven, peer-to-peer -peer network. In a peer-to-peer -peer network, devices communicate and share resources directly with each other without a centralized server. This is common in small networks or for file sharing. Number eight, the intranet and the extranet. An intranet is a private network within an organization accessible only to its members, whereas an extranet allows limited access to authorized external parties. Now let's look at the switch. A switch is a networking device that operates at the data link layer or layer two of the OSI model. It connects devices within a local area network or LAN and uses MAC addresses to forward data to the appropriate device on the network. Switches are more efficient than traditional hubs because they selectively send data only to the device that needs it, reducing network congestion. Now, what is a router? A router is a networking device that operates at the network layer or layer three of the OSI model. It connects different networks such as a local network to the internet, routers such as IP addresses to forward data between networks, making decisions based on routing tables. They play a crucial role in directing data packets to their destination across multiple networks. Switches, therefore, are used within a local network to efficiently connect devices, while routers connect different networks and enable communication between them. Now we go to the OSI model or the Open Systems Interconnection model, which is a conceptual framework that standardizes the functions of a telecommunication or computing system into seven abstraction layers. Each layer represents a specific level of functionality and the model helps in understanding 
designing and troubleshooting network systems. The seven layers from the bottom to the top are number one, the physical layer, which deals with the physical connection between devices. It includes specifications like cables, connectors, and the transmission of raw binary data over a physical medium. Number two, the data link layer focuses on creating a reliable link between two directly connected nodes, providing error detection and correction. Ethernet is an example of a data link layer protocol. Number three, network layer manages the addressing and routing of data between devices on different networks. The internet protocol or IP operates at this layer. Number four, the transport layer, which ensures end-to-end -end communication and data flow control. The TCP or transmission control protocol and the UDP or the user datagram protocol are transport layer protocols. Number five, session layer. This establishes, maintains, and terminates connections between applications. It manages sessions allowing data exchange between applications on different devices. Number six, presentation layer. Translates data between the application layer and the lower layers. It deals with data formatting, encryption and compression, ensuring that data is presented in a readable format. Number seven, application layer, which provides network services directly to end users or applications. It includes network aware applications and application level protocols like HTTP, SMTP, and FTP. The OSI model serves as a reference framework allowing different communication protocols to be compared and integrated into network systems. The transmission of data over the internet can be compared to the postal service in several ways to make understanding easier. The process step-by-step can be compared as follows. Number one, addresses. Just like the postal service relies on physical addresses, the internet has its own version, the IP addresses, directing data packets to specific devices or servers. Number two, packets and envelopes. Imagine data packets as the cool tech savvy cousins of traditional envelopes. Each packet contains a slice of data, neatly wrapped for its journey, just like how letters are placed in envelopes. The internet breaks down the information into packets, making it easier to handle and route them to their destination. And number three, routing or delivery. In the internet world, routers are the wise sages akin to postal sorting facilities. They look at addresses, ponder the best path, and guide data packets on their quest. Postal services sort and route physical mail with the same dedication, ensuring letters find their way home. This means that each data packet may be sent to their destination on separate routes and in a random manner. Number four, reliability. Both realms aim for reliable delivery. The internet deploys its knight in shining armor. TCP or Transmission Control Protocol for data integrity and reliable communication. Meanwhile, the Postal Service has its trusty seeds and tracking scrolls to ensure packages and letters reach their intended recipients. Number five, speed. In the race against time, the internet dons its superhero cape, allowing data to zoom almost instantly. Meanwhile, the Postal Service with its tried and true methods might take days or even weeks for delivery depending on the distance. It's a flash versus snail mail showdown and you can guess who wins. Number six, cost. Internet communication is the savvy penny pincher, often more cost effective for instant and long distance chats. The postal service on the other hand might involve a bit more coin, especially for international or express deliveries. It's a budget friendly versus the old school postage stamp Face off. Number seven, physical versus virtual. Picture the postal service dealing with tangible packages and letters while the internet zips around transmitting digital data. It's like comparing knights in shining armor to sleek futuristic spacesuits. The digital era's impact on speed, scalability, and the nature of transmitted content is evident. Parallel processing. Number eight, the internet throws a party with its multicast and broadcast capabilities, 
simultaneously sending data to multiple recipients meanwhile the postal service follows the old school invite system sending individual items to specific addresses it's a techno party versus a classic ball who says you can't have both in the grand comparison between postal networks and computer networks both are heroes in their own means of communication and information exchange the differences in infrastructure speed reliability and cost make them suitable for different needs the digital nature of computer networks emerges victorious providing advantages in speed scalability and efficiency making it the reigning king of the communication kingdom summarizing data transmission over the internet through these series of well defined steps is as follows number 1 data generation data is created by a user or generated by an application on a device number 2 data packaging the data is divided into smaller packets for efficient transmission each packet contains a portion of the original data along with metadata like source and destination addresses number 3 encapsulation each packet is encapsulated with headers at different layers of the osi model providing necessary information for routing and delivery number 4 routing the data packets are sent through a series of routers routers use information in the packet headers especially at the network layer or layer 3 to determine the best path to the destination number 5 transmission over the internet the data packets travel over various physical mediums including fiber optic cables copper cables or wireless connections depending on the type of network and the distance involved number 6 reassembly upon reaching their destination the data packets are reassembled into the original data by the receiving device number 7 delivery to application layer the data is then passed up through the layers of the osi model and the information reaches the application layer where it can be processed by the intended application number 8 user interaction the user or application interacts with the received data completing the communication process It's important to note that this process involves various network protocols such as TCP or transmission control protocol for reliable connection oriented communication or user datagram protocol for faster connection less communication additionally the internet protocol or IP handles addressing and routing the network layer we will cover these topics in our upcoming video thank you so much for joining me on my channel and i hope to see you again if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and ring that bell for more exciting videos until next time happy learning thank you